so welcome to this short video. Um, in this video, we're going to have a look at the HR diagram, which is the Hertzsprung Russell diagram, and where some stars actually sit on it and why they might actually sit there. So some of you may be familiar with what this diagram is, and if you're not, all of the observations of stars that have been made, if you plot them on a graph like this, we've got luminosity on the y-axis and the surface temperature on the x-axis, then you get this kind of structure and you get certain groups of stars. What we're gonna have a look at is a couple of those groups and the stars that actually sit within those. Why do they sit there? So the main group of stars is actually the main sequence stars. So you note that you've got a bit of a diagonal going across your plot. And this is where all your main sequence stars are gonna reside. Now, the only difference between all of those stars on that diagonal is their mass because their mass directly relates to their surface temperature or their luminosity. Um, the bigger the star, the brighter they are, hotter they are, and the other way around, the smaller the star, then they're, they're cooler. And they're, they're, because they're physically smaller, then they're actually less luminous. And stars that are on the main sequence, that's the main part of their life. It's where their cores are fusing hydrogen into helium. So this is kind of where they're, they're most stable, where most stars spend the majority of their lives. And you can see actually the sun is kind of in the middle of that main sequence, really. So at the very bottom of that main sequence, we have red dwarf stars. So these are very small stars. They're called red dwarfs because they appear reddish. They're quite cool. So their surface temperatures are quite cool. So you're talking on the order of you know, 3,000 um, degrees around about that. Um, they're quite small, so their physical size is small, so it means that they're not very bright because they have a very small size, they're not going to be giving out that much light. So they kind of sit at the bottom of this main sequence there. Although they are on the main sequence, they just sit at the very bottom. As a bit of a comparison to planets, really, we've got two red dwarf stars there that actually are not that much bigger than Jupiter. So these are very small stars, they're kind of at the lower boundary of what we will classify as a star. Now, once stars are done on the main sequence, specifically the sun actually, so solar sized stars, stars with the same sort of mass as the sun, a little bit more, once they finish the main sequence and that hydrogen in their core has been fused into helium, then they actually move on to the red giant branch of the HR diagram. So they move kind of to the upper right. Now, why do they do that? Well, when, it go, when a star turns into a red giant, it actually swells up. This causes the surface temperature de to decrease. So actually, if you have a look at the surface temperature, they actually get cooler. But because they're physically getting bigger and they get a lot bigger when they swell up, they become more luminous. So they appear brighter in the sky because it's actually they've got a bigger surface area. So that's why they take that sort of track up into the red giant branch, really. Now, at the end of that part of their life, they start to kind of move across the top of the HR diagram. So they start to shed those outer layers of the red giant and the bright central core is then exposed and it then illuminates their outer layers really. And you end up with this planetary nebula. And because these outer layers are spread out, they're expanding and then they're um, illuminated themselves, they're quite luminous. So they appear quite bright and their surface temperature increases because that, that central core is now kind of exposed. So they appear to have a much higher surface temperature as well. Now that central part is actually a white dwarf or will become a white dwarf. So that central core, once the planetary nebula has kind of dissipated, you're left with just the core, which is a white dwarf and they kind of sit down here on the bottom. Now the reason why they sit there is yes, they're very, very hot, so that you notice that they have very high surface temperatures, but they're very small. So these white dwarf stars are very, very small. In fact, they're only the size of a terrestrial planet. And these central cores are very compact. It makes them very small. So if they're very small, they're not going to be very bright, regardless of their temperature. They just don't have a large surface area. So it's why they sit in this area here. But interestingly, they're not generating any energy themselves. So it's just the leftover heat or energy from their point on the main sequence, really. Um, so what happened is over time, they move down 
in that white dwarf group. So they go to the, the lower right and they cool down. And actually, in time, they won't be visible at all. It'll take a very long time. And then finally, some of the very largest stars we have in the universe, and there's not that many of them, they're quite rare, but these hypergiants sit at the very top left. The reason is they have very, very high surface temperatures and they're very, very luminous. So these sit there right at the top, but they're so luminous, in fact, that they're actually losing their outer layers. So just the outward pressure of the light they're giving off is actually shedding their outer layers. And they have this very fast expanding envelopes around them, which we can see here. Um, and then you have a very bright central star to that as well. So that's why they sit there at the, on the upper left of these diagrams. So thank you for watching. Hopefully that was interesting.